you only knew the power. So if you've made it here to part two of this Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6 tips and tricks series, you must truly know the power of one, the power of two, the power of many tips and tricks and hidden features. So join me once again and together we can rule the galaxy. And if you missed part one, the beginner tips, don't worry, I'll link that at the end. And if you like what you see in this video, in part three, we'll go into the more advanced and more well hidden secret settings that can completely revolutionize the way you use your Galaxy Z Flip. Anyway, that's enough talk. Now, tip one. Phones can do so much nowadays that we forget what they were actually designed for, making and taking calls. And do you remember how flip phones used to work in the 90s? It's slim enough to fit in a pocket so it's easy to keep in touch. You could literally flip them open to answer a call and flip them closed to end the call. And you can do this here with the Z Flip 6, but you gotta do this first. So check out this retro tip. Go into your phone app, hit the three dots and go to your settings. On this page, you'll see this flip options. And here you can activate the open phone to answer calls. Now, whenever you get a phone call and your phone is in the closed position, flip it open and it will answer that call. And this one should already be activated. If it isn't, switch this on to close phone to end calls. Okay, number two, here's another phone tip that so many people don't use but should use. Now you're not gonna be one of those people. Check this out, open the phone app and at the top you'll see your name. Now if you tap on this, now on this page if you want to, you can add relationships. So for example, family members and friends here using Bixby and you can also set reminders when you're in specific places to switch on your Wi-Fi. And of course you can add your medical information and emergency contacts as well. So spend a bit of time doing that. But what I really wanna show you is this, at the top you'll see create profile card. And here we can create an image that pops up when you phone your family and friends. So for the profile card itself, if you use an image of yourself where your face is clearly in the image, you can actually use AI and the portrait studio feature to create a cartoon image of yourself. which can be quite fun. You've also got the 3D cartoon, the watercolor and sketch as well. Now, once you've chosen your picture, you can alter the text on the screen as well. So it's here right now. And we can change the font, the color and all that stuff as well. And if you hit preview, you'll see how that will appear when you phone people. Once you're happy with it, hit done. Now, another thing you can do here is actually customize the profile picture itself. So if you tap on that, there's a little pen here next to this. And here you can take a photo with your camera, add an image from the gallery or use the AR emoji. And now you've created your calling card. I'm not a big fan of this drawing, so I'm just gonna change this. Now, once you've set up your profile card, how you want it to be, here is how you should share your information going forward. When you jump into your phone book and go back to your number at the top of the page, in the bottom right corner here, you'll see share. That's an option, but the better way is this, create a QR code. This creates a QR code with all your information and the images that you just set up attached to it. They can then scan it and it will automatically give them the option to save all the details to their phone. And if you want to, you can even download this profile card to your device so you can send it over WhatsApp and things like that as well. So if you have a Galaxy Z Flip phone and you're taking selfie photos with this inner camera, you're doing yourself a massive disservice. It's like having a Porsche on a driveway, but choosing to drive a Ford Fiesta because it's parked on the road. And here's why I say that. The inner display camera is just 10 megapixels. It's a small sensor and the optics in front of it are also very small. Now on the flip side, you have a very large premium 50 megapixel sensor with proper camera optics at your disposal. So if you wanna get good at looking good, you need to be using the primary cameras whenever you take a selfie, here's how you do it. You should have the shortcut for your camera here on this screen, and you might have the shortcut to the camera with the double push here on the side button. If you haven't changed it to the wallet, like I showed you in, in part one of this video, I have the wallet mapped here. So in order to use this camera shortcut, you just drag it into the center of the screen, that opens the selfie camera. You're now taking photos with the best camera that you have. So if you raise your palm up to the phone, it will start the timer to take a photo. Another way to take a photo with the cover screen is to use the volume rocker up, that snaps a photo, and you can also touch the screen 
to take a photo as well. This camera is literally five times better than the inner display selfie camera. So going forward, trust me, this is the way you should be taking selfies. So now you know how to take better selfie photos. Here's a tip to help you level up your selfie video game and take your vertical videos to the next level for your TikToks and things like that. So open your camera like I just showed you and now just open the phone in the flex view. So that's where it's kind of half open like this. Straight away, you'll see this little yellow icon here. This activates the auto framing and you can see there how it's kind of zooming in and zooming out on its own. This works for photos, but it works even better for videos. So if you swipe across to the video section now, here there's a little setting you do have to enable. So the little drop down in the top right corner, if you hit that, see the little dot with the square around it. If you tap that, that activates auto framing for video. Now, if you're taking a video of a person, let's say doing a TikTok dance or something like that in front of the camera, you'll notice it actually does everything it can to stay locked on to the subject in the video. This is definitely one of the best ways to film vertical videos with this phone. And like I said in the previous tip, you shouldn't be using the inner camera. Definitely use the best cameras that you have on your device when it comes to selfie videos and photos. Now let me show you a tip that will help you take nicer photos of your family and friends. And this is gonna be especially useful if they're the type of people who pulls a funny, awkward face at the very last moment whenever someone points a camera at them. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm very guilty of that. And that's why I like this tip so much. So check this out. If you open your camera in the open view, and use the rear camera, you'll notice at the top right corner of this page, you have this icon, it's a little square, that activates the cover screen on the back, so that when you're taking photos of family and friends, they will have their own little viewfinder so they can see how they look, and this will definitely help them prepare for the photo and maybe pose a little bit better, and ultimately it should help you take better photos. Okay, here's something that should have been in part one of this first things to do tips and tricks series, and it is to get a really good case for your phone. Now you could go with a very bulky case that converts your phone into the size of a car battery, or you could go for something very slim like this. This is from Thinborn. They haven't sponsored this video, but they did send this over so that I can show it to you guys. These cases are super lightweight, and this one does have the MagSafe ring built into the case as well, and it's unbelievably thin, but unbelievably strong. So you keep that original kind of form factor. And something that's really nice about this one is it's raised up around the camera module so that when you put your phone down on a table or a surface, the camera lenses won't be scratched. I've been using these lately with all my Galaxy phones and I can highly recommend them. And if you're not familiar with Aramid Fiber, this is the kind of stuff that Batman uses. And if you do want to buy one of these, there will be a link below. And you should also know you get a bunch of extra free stuff with it as well. So you get extra adhesive strips which go inside the case if they start to lose their stickiness. You also get some tempered glass screen protectors and cleaning wipes and everything you need to apply these nicely. Now listen, when it comes to taking photos in general, with the primary camera, the Galaxy phones will combine pixels together to gather more light. They call this pixel binning, and this is especially useful in lower light conditions. But if you find yourself in a good lighting situation and you want all the details, you can use all the 50 million pixels on the primary sensor to take photos. Here's how you can do that. So if you open your camera, at the top you'll see 12M. That's 12 million pixels. To change this, just tap the 12M icon and it automatically switches it to 50 megapixels. Like I said before, this is fantastic if you want to capture loads of detail. Let's say you're on holiday, there's a really nice bit of scenery and the sun's out. That's a fantastic time to use this. Just keep in mind that the file sizes will be bigger. And if you zoom in, it will actually reduce the amount of megapixels the further you go. So it is a great tool to use from time to time. And really these tips are just skimming the surface of what the Samsung Galaxy cameras can do. I did make an entire video about camera settings for Galaxy phones. I'll link that at the end if you want to become a true Galaxy camera master. Anyway, on to the next one. Now, if you watch part one of this three-part Galaxy Z Flip 6 series, I teased some more advanced tips for the cover screen. Here's one of them, and there'll be more in part three of this series, but check this out. Dive into your settings, scroll down, 
till you see advanced features. Here, you want to go into the labs section. And here on this page, you'll see apps allowed on cover screen and it's switched off, so switch that on. Now, once you've done that, if you tap the writing here where it says apps allowed on the cover screen, you'll see the options that you currently have. As you install more apps, you might have more options, but we can enable all of these now. And now, when we go back to the cover screen, you probably already got a bunch of widgets that you set up if you watch part one of the series. But at the end here, on the very last page, you will now see the apps that you have enabled. And just a little reminder for you guys, see how many times I had to swipe to get to that? If you just pinch, you can zoom out on all of the pages on the cover screen, and then you can just jump straight into it. Two touches as opposed to like six or seven. And then here you can open apps and actually use them on the cover screen. And there we go, that's part one right there. <laughs> Definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already. Okay, now let's flip back to the big screen and here's a tip to help you improve your viewing experience when watching video content like this video. Go into your settings. Once again, we're gonna go into the advanced section. And on this page, if you scroll down, you'll see this setting here, video brightness. By default, it's on normal. If you change this to bright, whenever you're watching video content on any of the apps that show up here, it will increase the brightness for you. Do keep in mind, this might use a little bit more power than normal, but if you want to enjoy your video content with the proper brightness, you should definitely switch this on. And you can pick and choose which apps you want it to work on as well. So if you did watch part one of this series, you might remember how I suggested that if you're coming over from an iPhone, you should probably use the Gboard instead of the Samsung keyboard. However, the Samsung keyboard has some superpowers. So from time to time, you might wanna switch back and forth. And I learned this the hard way. If you do wanna do that, you should definitely add the Gboard app to one of your home screens so you can switch back to the Gboard when needed. Because switching from the Samsung keyboard to the Gboard is actually a little tricky. You have to dive deep into the settings to do it. But if you have the app, you can literally just tap the app and then switch the input method here to the Gboard. Now, if you do have the Gboard open to switch to the Samsung keyboard, all you need to do is hit the little icon in the bottom left corner and that will bring up the options for you to switch back to the Samsung keyboard. And here are those little magic tricks that I was talking about. So let's say you've written a bit of text like this. What you can do is you can select that text and then here hit the little sparkly AI stars and then you can go to writing style. What this will do is it will read what you've written and give you some other options of different styles of writing. So we've got original, professional, we've got casual, we've got social, which is something I use a lot when it comes to writing social media posts because it adds all the emojis and things like that into the text. You've got polite and emojify as well at the bottom. And if you hit insert, it will add it in place of the existing text. But here's another level to this keyboard wizardry. If you hit the sparkling stars without selecting text, you have the AI composer. So if you tap this, you can give the AI a brief summary of what it is that you're trying to write and it will write it for you. And you can even choose what it's for. Is it for an email? Is it for social media or a comment? And you could choose whether it's polite, casual or professional. So let's go casual and let's go for social media. And hit generate. And there we go. If you're happy with what is written, you can just tap the insert in the bottom right corner and that will add it to your document or your comment or whatever it is you're writing. This is super useful and time saving. And maybe you can even get it to do your homework for you. Okay, here's another tip while staying on the Samsung keyboard. If you hit the settings icon here at the bottom, scroll down till you see swipe, touch and feedback. And at the top of this page, you'll see swipe control. So if you go to this, you can enable the swipe to type. So if you are having a hard time with the Samsung keyboard, this could actually make it a bit easier for you. So if you enable swipe to type, you can literally just hold your finger down and swipe between the letters. And it actually does a very, very good job of detecting what it is you're trying to write. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can actually do with the Samsung keyboard. It's got so many more features than the Gboard and even SwiftKey. So if you wanna learn about those, I'll be going into more depth in part three of this video series. But for now, let's move on to the next one. So this one is just a very quick navigation trick 
that not many people know about and it's really for those people who choose to use the navigation gestures as opposed to the buttons. So see the little line at the bottom there? That's your navigation bar. And actually if you swipe across, you can swipe between pages just by sliding your finger across it as opposed to opening all the backgrounding and then going like this to get to the previous app. So this is just a very quick way to go back and forwards between the last few apps very quickly. Okay, while we're talking about multitasking, let me show you the basics of split screening on the Z Flip 6. It's got two nice halves to this device, so it's really perfect for split screening. So if you swipe up to bring up your backgrounding apps, choose an app that you want to split screen and hit the icon of that app. And then here you'll see the option to split view. You also got the option for pop-up window, but we're just gonna do split view for now. So this will pin that app to the top half of the display. And at the bottom half, you'll see you have the option to open another app. Now, if this is a setup that you're gonna use often, what you can now do is hit the three dots in the center and hit the little star icon here. And you have the option to add that app pair to the home screen or to the edge panel. We're gonna come back to the edge panel in a moment, but for now I'm gonna add it to the home screen. And that is now available right here for quick access next time I want to use that exact same split screen. And if you don't have YouTube Premium and you can't do background play using YouTube, this could be a good way to keep YouTube open in the background whilst doing something else. One more thing I wanna show you when it comes to split screen is if you hit the three dots in the middle, you can flip the screens around if needed. Okay, this next one is a very, very powerful tool that you should definitely be using it is the edge panel. So up here on this right corner, you should see a little faint bar. If you slide that out, you have your edge panels. Now what most people probably don't do is actually customize the edge panels. To do this, if you hit the little pen in the bottom right corner, you can delete the apps that are not useful and add apps that would be more useful for you. And these should be apps that you don't have on your home screen already. And just make sure that it does make sense for how you use the phone. Now the next little bonus tip for the edge panels is this. If you swipe it out, you'll see very briefly the settings icon pops up here at the bottom and then it disappears. So you have to be pretty quick and tap it before it disappears. Now once you do that, you'll see this page here where you can add more panels. And one of the most useful ones by far is the clipboard. So if you ever copy a bit of text which you plan to use in the future and then accidentally you copy a one-time passcode or something like that, you might think that you've lost that beautiful AI text that you copied earlier on. But actually you haven't because you can now recall it very quickly by swiping out, swiping out again. Here you'll find all of the text that was copied to the clipboard even prior to the last one. So this feature can be incredibly useful. So definitely set it up and just remember to swipe between them, just swipe across and definitely check out some of the other edge panels because some of them might also be very useful to you. Now here's a bonus tip involving the edge panels. So once you set up all the apps that you like to use on the edge panel, if you hold your finger down on one of them, you can drag it onto the display for split screening or into the center for floating window. This is a more advanced way of doing split screening and pop-up windows. If you do a pop-up window, if you tap the line at the top, you can shrink it down. You can also expand it. You can make it transparent. So if you wanna have like your calculator kind of floating over the display, you can do that too. And from here we can convert it into a split screen as well. Just like before, choose one app for the top, one for the bottom, job done. Now, if you don't have a VPN that you use regularly, did you know that Samsung actually has its own VPN built in? This might be region specific though. You should definitely have a look, see if you've got it or not. So jump into your settings, security and privacy, more security settings. Here you'll find secure Wi-Fi. This won't be enabled by default. So if you do have it, it's worth enabling it and it does work on demand. So it's not gonna be on permanently. On this page, you have the option to set it to auto protect. So whenever you connect to an unknown Wi-Fi network, it will kick in. One thing to keep in mind is the standard version of this only gives you one gig of data per month for free. You can upgrade and have more data if you want to. Essentially what this is, is a VPN that protects your IP address. So if you hit protect here, that will switch it on. And you might be thinking, well, that sounds like a lot of work to switch on and off the VPN. I'm gonna show you an easier way to use this in a moment. 
But before we do, I wanna show you another very quick tip. So if you've come over from Apple, you're probably missing your AirDrop. But did you know that Google devices also have a version of AirDrop? They call it Quick Share. And it works very much the same way, but between Android devices, even if they're not Samsung. Here's how you can use it. So if you swipe down from the top, swipe down again, this is your Quick Settings page. Here you will see Quick Share. If you hold your finger down on that, that jumps straight into the settings page for Quick Share. You can actually navigate to it the long way as well if you want to. So let's say you wanna share some photos or videos or files from your phone to another Android phone. What you wanna do is go to this section here, nearby sharing and who can share with you. If you tap on this, you can actually change it to everyone or contacts only. If you do set it to everyone, you can set a time limit for that to be just 10 minutes. So it automatically switches off. I definitely recommend you leave that as it is. So now you've got that set up, let's say you've got a really nice image you wanna share with someone else on Android. If you hit the little share icon at the bottom, go to quick share, you'll get this page. And let's say they're not in your contacts already, it would be a bit of a pain to go all the way back into the settings to change that. What I recommend you do, which is much easier if they're not one of your contacts, is to use the QR code link here. This creates a little QR code so that you can share this photo with people even if they're not in your contacts library. All they need to do is raise their camera up to this QR code and it will automatically send that file to them very quickly using direct Wi-Fi. So when it comes to sharing between Android devices, this is the best way to do it. Don't do it via WhatsApp because WhatsApp will compress the image and you'll lose all the quality of the photo. And there is some more advanced quick share settings that you can play around with that can make your files and photos disappear after a certain amount of time once you've shared them. We'll come back to that in part three of this video series. Now here's a little bonus tip for you guys when it comes to sharing data between your devices. For example, your phone and your laptop, or your phone and your tablet, or your phone and someone else's phone or something like that. There's a few ways to do it, but this is definitely the best way. Bring your quick settings menu down. You'll see mobile hotspot here. If you hold your finger down on that, that jumps straight into the settings page so you don't have to navigate to it. You can switch on your hotspot and you'll see right now you have a generic password set up. You can customize that to pretty much anything you want, but this is something you wanna keep an eye on. See where it says band, 2.4 gigahertz is decent. It's really good for longer ranges, but if you wanna get maximum speed to your device, you can actually turn up the band all the way to 6G. Now do keep in mind if you do that, to make sure the device you're sharing with does support 6G, most devices, pretty much all devices now do support 5G and that's considerably faster than 2.4 gigahertz, but the range is a bit shorter. So there's a little hotspot speed hack for you guys. Now the next thing that you should be aware of is if you are gonna share a hotspot with friends and family and you don't wanna give away your password, you can switch on the one-time password. And if you tap on that, that creates a generic password which can only be used once. And once again, instead of actually reading it out to them, you can hit the QR code at the bottom of the screen they can scan that and that will automatically allow them to join your mobile hotspot for one time only. Now here's something that you should definitely do with your new phone. When you swipe down, swipe down again, you have your quick settings here and they're in the default format right now. If you want to customize this, all you need to do is hit the pen in the top right corner and you can go to edit and here you can delete and add things to the quick settings. Now there is something that you should definitely add on day one, which isn't there by default and it's this, the Dolby Atmos setting. So add that to your home screen. And whilst you're here, it's also worth adding the secure Wi-Fi, which I showed you in the previous tips. Now you don't have to go all the way into the security settings. You can just toggle it on and off as and when it's needed. And to customize these, you can literally just hold your finger down like you would with your icons on your desktop and drag them around into an order that works best for you. And if you do wanna customize that first row, you can come back and go to edit here, and this edits the top six widgets. And the reason I said to add Dolby Atmos is because when you enable this, this actually makes the phone speakers sound better, in my personal opinion. It does seem to improve the audio quality when consuming video content. All right, here's a couple of fun ones before we wrap this up. And these are in regards to photos and videos. So check this out. Let's say you've gone on holiday, you've gone to a really nice location and you're trying to get a good photo, but people just keep photo bombing you. There's a really easy way to erase people out of a photo. So for example, these two ladies here completely ruining this picture. What you can do is actually use the object eraser to get rid of them. Don't hit the AI stars, hit the pen. 
Now hit the AI stars. You can tap the object that you want to remove and it will highlight them or you can draw a circle around them and it will do its best to pick them out. Now, once you've highlighted the area, all you need to do is hold your finger down on that and you'll see the eraser icon here. And there we go, that's the first step to erasing them. Now, if we zoom out and hit generate, the phone does this AI magic and there we go, they're gone. All right, here's a little magic video trick for you guys to play around with. So I've got this video of the dog jumping around in this field and there's a bit where she's in midair. Now, what you can do with any video clip captured on your Galaxy Z Flip is this. So let's say that moment when she launches into the air, I wanna freeze that and slow it down. You just hold your finger down on the very moment where it happens and then once you lift your finger off, you have the option to download the slow-mo version of that video. And this will be saved as a separate video in your Photos app. And there we go, slow-mo. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and got some value out of it. If you did, let me know in the comments. If you missed part one, that thumbnail's on screen right now. And if you wanna dive deeper and become a true Samsung Galaxy master, you need to check out part three of this series. That thumbnail's on screen right now. The links to those videos will be in the description below. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man, and I will see you in the next one. Don't be late. If you only knew the power of one, the power of two, oh. the power of many.